Okay, so here we are still playing Urban Sprawl. Um, moved over to the pink player's turn. He's going to pass that active player marker. Uh, but let's go over what happened there. So he spent his uh, action points on triggering off the gravel pit. There was a card that he could pick up easily that allowed him to play that. And that got built over here near the wilderness. It had to be built there. Gave him a factory zero. He discarded a planning card in order to get a second factory vocation. He gets no cash off of this, but he gets a couple counters, which could be of value later. He didn't play a card to get cash. He had a decent amount in hand. He had a good card, too, like a 10-pointer, I think, this one that's up here. Uh, but money's becoming less and less valuable for most of the players, except maybe Green, who's, of course, winning right now. Um, he also triggered uh, or bought himself a theater. And that was here, got him one, two, three, uh, <coughs> and I hope I actually marked them, um, three uh, prestige for that. And took a card as his new favor, this drug store. It's not that he particularly wanted it, he just didn't want to waste an action point. Uh, that triggered the movement of some cards. We see an urban renewal card here, so people are going to be able to start destroying buildings. And we saw an event for civil servants come up. Player with the most civ buildings, not the most valuable, just the most. And that turned out to be white. Uh, oh, green does too. Ah, I didn't give them that, did I? Yeah, I didn't give them that. One, two, three. Pretty sure I didn't give them the money and the rewards for that. Um, so they each got that. We saw a seven wealth card, and remember, the only special counter out yet is the seven wealth counter. That gave big money to green, and a few bucks to pink, and one to white as well. We also saw some prestige handed around, and there was an election on that build permit card. And the treasure was elected, and that went away from white. It's a tie between pink and white for this. Green decided to break that tie in favor of pink because white had... Uh, been kind of dicky to him earlier. All right, well, the cards go away and we move to the green turn. Okay, now the green player is gone and he used his action points uh, to buy the coal plant. I believe this was his, uh, see, no, he may not have had a favor. He may have bought it off here. Let me see, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he bought it off the pile. Um, this was kind of a cool card expensive to play because it required a, you know, a big three permit with blue, which there weren't any before, which is why two, which is why the, uh, the one, the gravel pit didn't get, um, placed right away. It got put on the favor pile. But in this case, he was able to build it immediately, got an energy marker, um, and that's actually his second one, which the payoff was two, and he'd be able to choose two money or two prestige, except he has the police chief, so he got double prestige. He, or he got both wealth and prestige from that. He also had the district attorney, which gave him double neighborhood bonus, and he put this sucker right here, which was adjacent to a lot of, uh, well, only two blue buildings, so that's all he got for wealth and prestige, but a lot of other buildings, which triggered its additional two bucks for each adjacent building, and each of those adjacent buildings lost um, two prestige, so we see everybody else's prestige is dropping even further behind his. Then he had an election for police chief, which he won again. That didn't give him any real bonus. Uh, there was a payout on the one space, not a lot there. Uh, that didn't, but what we did have is this community leader card which Pink happened to have the most money and was able to play a 12 money uh, a wealth marker into a vacant space. He put it here because he's got a lot of pieces along there. So now he's hoping to pull in some big money off that. And we pass the active player marker over to Black. Alright. Okay, so now uh, on Black's turn, remember they have the union boss, so they get more action points than anyone else. They had eight they picked up the trucking company, which was sitting down on the one space. But in order to build it, they had to spend the five action points here. They could have also done it for eight, 
but obviously five is cheaper than eight, so they did that. And that fired off uh, a number of effects. First of all, they built it, I believe, here, which gave them a lot of uh, a lot of prestige points. They picked up a transportation <laughs> ship, which was worth five points, and they took that in prestige, figuring they're going to have enough money because they got two bucks for each industry that someone else controlled from that person. Um, now, the only other thing that happened were some payouts, a little bit of prestige, a um, little bit of money, uh, a decent amount of money, a five buck payout, but still not enough to really make a big deal about it at this point in the game. And now we'll move on to the white turn. And finishing our way around the board, the white player is done. It goes over to pink here. Um, the white player's turn, kind of a hard decision. He ended up buying a uh, supermarket that he had over in his favors section. Um, but he had to pay hard to buy it. Now let me see. He picked up the college, which was in the two spots. So he had to come up with four. Two of it was the Urban Renewal card, and I think one was this card. He took the Urban Renewal so that somebody can target green. He didn't want to do it this turn. Uh, the supermarket itself was built, I believe over here, for a couple of prestige. And then the uh, people had to pay for residences to him, two bucks each, and he gained money from residences for that. But a couple of events came up, estate auction. And he picked one of those green buildings. Nobody was willing to pay. You pay nine bucks. It's going to be the least valuable building on the board. And immediately I thought, oh, it's this one. But it's not because of that 12 that showed up just now. So it was this block. And he got to pick whatever building he wanted. He took that one. And green was unwilling to pay for it. Black was unwilling to pay. White said, hey, if I buy that, I'm in the running for mayor. And white has... 30 something bucks, so he thought that's worth doing. It would have gone around and ended up un, uh, unfilled otherwise. And then finally, this Masters of Industry, the two players with the most industry uh, got three money and three prestige, and that turned out to be black and green. Uh, green had these two, black has these two. Another, you know, these things just sort of happen to you. There was an election. Uh, there may have been a payout. I don't think so. There was an election for the union boss. Black had been the union boss. That went over actually to the pink player because now he has the most valuable industrial building over here. All right, well, that's one time. That's another time around. And some exciting stuff happened on Pink's turn. A lot of stuff, really. On their own building, um, all they really did was build a couple of kind of cheap buildings. Drugstore, gave them some cash from a, uh, not a lot. And I don't know where they built it, I think over here, but I'm not sure. And then they built a cathedral, which I believe was over here, which gave them cash. Everybody paid cash. Uh, they had the option of either paying cash or paying prestige. Uh, if they had houses. Everybody paid cash, including Green, who actually wiped their cash out almost. Uh, they still have a few bucks left, but they have this big card with 12 bucks on it. Some payouts happened. An election for mayor happened, which Pink actually won. Uh, this go went to the person with the most vocations. Media got to break the tie. Media said, hey, Pink's not doing well at all. Then we had a flood, and the flood targeted this space as the least valuable building, as the least valuable space. Um, and that gave a situation where white had the choice of paying either three gold or three dollars, which they did, or prestige, which they didn't, um, to save the building. If they hadn't, the mayor would have lost nine prestige. Now, given that the mayor is in last place, uh, the uh, the white player didn't really want to hose the two of them. If it had been green, he might have done that. And then we move into the next game stage. The sports team came up, which means the contractor went to the person with the least prestige. The guy who's losing. His buildings can't be destroyed, and he can destroy buildings at will. 
uh, as long as he's building over them. Um, all the city cards in the 1, 2, and 3 spaces went away, and we had Metropolis cards fill that in. There was one payoff for the naval base, which gave some prestige, good bonus. Uh, you know, three bucks for three prestige is what it worked out to be. Well, no. Uh, I did not. Black got all the prestige on them. Oh, well. Um, and now we're in sort of the final stage of the game. Somewhere about halfway through this deck, the game will just end. It looks like a commanding lead for Green here versus the other players. Now, Green definitely went without the kind of ability to generate money that the other players did and got the bonus in that starting uh, prestige. He's kind of held that position. If anything, widened the gap. So, kind of seeing maybe I concentrated too much on money. You got to cut it a little closer to the bone. All right, well, we move the active player marker down to Green. And we can see how much he can hold that lead. Okay, so Green took their turn. We'll move them along. But they only built one thing, a hotel, which is built here. Gave him a tourism chit, the first one of those. And they took a, an extra house that you get for free for that in the fourth lot. Now, and they also picked up uh, the par amusement park, which gives them a bonus on the tourism again. So, you know, they're kind of trying to look at the future a little bit here. The main thing, though, was to try to get these uh, contracts out of the way to try to generate them. And they didn't do a great job of that, but it's hard to build things now. You either have to spend a lot of action points to get the cheaper cards, which doesn't really help. He wants to get through this deck. Of course, this one's not bad. Or... Um, use a lot of contracts to build the bigger ones. Now, using a lot of contracts is what he actually did. Uh, he had to pay a lot of cards. He spent one out of his hand to get extra cash so he could build things. He ended up taking one for next turn that'll help him towards the amusement park if he can get it out there, or something else. It's a pretty good card. It can be used, too, for any color. Uh, not good for money. He needed money this turn. Maybe he won't next turn because there were a lot of events. And what we see is this is the second time through the deck a lot of the events that didn't happen before got re uh, are coming out now and because of the reshuffle before. Um, mainly, just a lot of payouts of various types because of the event cards. None of them too exciting. No great uh, thrilling things happened there, but we did have a couple of elections. District Attorney and Treasurer were both elected. Uh, District Attorney moved from Green over to white because of this. And uh, the treasure, it was a, a tie, I believe, between black and pink. The DA, white, got to choose which player got it. And he said, well, pink's in, in behind. We see a lot of points of prestige and a lot of money came out. That's one of the effects, especially the money. The events caused both, but the money bringing planning the the planning deck out uh, generates a lot of cash. So the fact that people are having to play more of those cards mean they're going to have more cash to build things with. And it makes money less and less important as we go. So those early investments in getting lots of money are no longer as important as they were at the early part of the game. All right, on to Blackstreet. Well, the black player. Uh, only played his one favor card, which was the library, which meant he didn't trigger any changes here. That got him an education six, which gave him and pink lots of prestige. But, and where did he put it? He wanted to place it here. He was one buck short. He would have been uh, using this uh, urban renewal that he picked up this turn. Unfortunately, he picked it up, and there was no way to really figure out where things came from anymore at that point. So he couldn't do it, so he held on to it. But on the other hand, uh, some events came up, a little bit of a couple elections. Uh, no, just one, the police chief, which was won again by the green player because this is, strangely enough, the most valuable of the residential areas. Uh, the next would have been over here to pink. There's none in this 12 row, which is kind of a shame. Somebody could have gained a 
an edge over green that way. An event came up though. If only one player has the most prestige, which is green here, uh, he gets to play the six prestige marker and he put it up here where he's in play, someone else is, and not a lot of other people are. He could have put it over here, which probably would have advantaged him a little bit more in terms of the edge, but now he's made a more valuable area somewhere kind of odd where people are going to have to start going into and fighting to build in to get that additional prestige. Prestige is what's important at this point, obviously. I don't know if he made the right move. He may have wanted to just try to dominate the area that he's already in. But it makes for an interesting decision for the other players because they'll get less of a benefit playing up here where there's almost nothing. Whereas down here, they can get an immediate benefit by playing inside the city. All right, well, the card moves on to the white player. And ending things off from the white player, which will, of course, move things back here. We had, you played an uh, urban renewal card and the college, and finally got rid of that valuable green one and built something down in the downtown area that looks like it's going to be worth a little something. Um, the college gave him an additional bonus, non-park buildings on each of these rows. I forgot to give that out. Okay, non-park building on each of these rows. All right, green gets two. Uh, black got two. White got four. I think the other thing would have still been in effect. Uh, and pink. It's one, two, oh, that's the wrong one. One, two, three, four. Pink got eight. Okay, but now the other way is this row. And it counts double, so white gets four more. Green gets four more. Pink gets two more. Green gets two more for this that I didn't see. And black gets four more. Okay, and another effect, which I hope I did correctly. The sem uh, he also got the education bonus there, which paid out for him. Uh, did he already have one? No, I don't think so. Out, uh, no, he did not have one. Uh, someone else gets this. So actually he would have done the cemetery first. Uh, but he got the education bonus, which will pay out, what, four for everyone with an education. Three people have it. That's pink, white, yeah, he had to do them in different order, and black. But with the cemetery, he could ignore zoning restrictions. He didn't have a lot of money, so he put it up here, which was within zoning. Uh, but both black and white, if he did it in this order, which he would have, uh, had to pay him four bucks and four prestige. So actually, or sorry, both black and green. So actually, white is gaining a lot of ground on this turn. He had a very good turn. Uh, and that's the first of the Metropolis. Entrepreneurs come up, and that gave the person with the most calm buildings a little bonus, nothing big. The rest of the cards also faded through, and that's the end of the turn. I'm going to wrap this one and send it up to you.